Hey everybody, if you're new around here, thanks for stopping by. Welcome to the show. My name is Jesse. Today we're gonna to talk about my experience with the RC Speedy chassis. First and foremost, if you appreciate the video, interested in it, wanna see more, as always, subscribe to the channel, uh, like this video, a comment really helps too. The YouTube algorithm is pretty interesting, but it's not what we're here to talk about today. Today we are here to talk about the RC Speedy chassis. Uh, and really, my experience after buying two RC Speedy chassis, uh, first is I bought the C2 chassis and I also owned a B1 for just a little bit of time too. So first things first, what is the RC Speedy chassis? If you haven't seen them, uh, they are sweeping social media have been for the last year or so. I purchased my first one directly from RC Speedy last year. Uh, like I said, purchased a C2 chassis. Uh, this is not the C2, this is the C3, uh, which is just a, an iterated version on, but uh, it's really amazing guys the metal that shows up is high quality the welds are high quality everything is amazing when you get it in your hands uh, i did opt for the regular steel one and uh, i'll talk a little bit about the configurations here in just a second but basically these are made to order they require a deposit and throughout the process you kind of pay as you go the first thing i want to say as i got into this is you know every rc project goes over budget it does but this one was really over budget right out of the gate i think for the rc speedy to show up at my house parts included uh you know just the base parts and then i did some optional parts which you'll see in some pictures and videos here in a minute uh and shipping it was almost a thousand dollars today so the price that you see here you know it's 150 down 499 total it's not maybe indicative of where the price will end including shipping and things like that now i did order last year so it might be one of those things where the process has changed for them but who knows i know that you can go through facebook i actually ordered mine through the website and there's a certain level of communication that you have back and forth with the creators of the rc speedy chassis i did all of that through facebook paid them through paypal all that kind of other fun stuff so that's how you order that's what it is uh, these things are beautiful works of art they look incredible i mean they're fantastic looking but I had two experiences which really made me want to, thanks for the follow, uh, they made me want to make a video about it because I feel like I've seen things on social media where people either love these things, they're perfect and they're meant, or people have not a great experience like I had. So I wanted to make a video, talk about the pros and cons and go from there. Now that we know what we are dealing with in terms of how to order one, the price point, all that kind of fun stuff, we can talk about what showed up. I don't have the exact picture from the exact day that mine showed up, but I can tell you it looked a lot like this. It does come with panels. I opted for an optional 3D printed uh, rear radiator uh, light bar mounts that mount back here on the, uh, on the I guess it would be the, the B pillar for this one, but little tabs back there. Um, it comes with panels and you know I also opted for a fully painted um, aluminum maybe steel uh, fuel cell it looks really scale and I got the sway bar it was all really good again just expensive no big deal uh, it is what it is you pay to play when I got it really excited I wanted to put in the SSD Pro you know 1.9 width axles they're like AR 44s or super 44s whatever SSD calls them put those underneath there was gonna run some nittos and, and really make this a nice looking ultra 4 car so uh, the first picture I have for you guys is not that one. We will minimize and go over here. Is uh, when I was putting everything together, wiring, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, here's kind of a mid progress picture. I'm using, again, I had already spent so much money, I was kind of looking for parts off the shelf that may kind of just make me feel if I like this machine or not. So I went through, and if you can't see, the chassis is amazing, the shock towers. The welds, everything's absolutely beautiful. I have a Chase Light from Amazon. Their 3D uh, RC Speedy's 3D printed uh, rear radiator fan and the fuel cell. I stuck an extra Nitto back there. Uh, the trailing arms are beautiful. I got the RC Speedy um, rear sway bar. Everything looks great. I'm getting the interior and the electronics figured out. So what kind of started throwing wrenches in it? Well, it wasn't really until I got to the front that I started having problems. Uh, in the front of the car, I noticed that it is a three link, which means that the servo is mounted on the body. You have a pan hard bar, all that um, kind of normal stuff that you would expect to see. Let's see if I can find a picture that's uh, semi, semi well lit here. Thanks everybody for the follow. So 
I can't exactly see it under there, but like I said, SSD, brass knuckles, brass linkage, all that kind of fun stuff. Everything looks, you know, as it should. But I couldn't seem to get the links right. So I kept swapping everything out over and over and over again in the front. And so when it came to the front, I just couldn't seem to get the link situation figured out. I reached out to RC Speedy to confirm whether or not I had had, you know, everything sent to me. They said, yep, everything looks good on our end. So up here, I want to point out a couple of things before we get going too far. So I started looking into the front links for everything. And no matter how I put it, it just seemed like the front upper bar was just too low. And I'll tell you guys this, if I spend thousand dollars on something, a chassis that's, you know, not ready to run or whatever, um, I expect kind of things to be right the first time. And I'll kind of talk a little bit more about this, but not only did I have issues between the pan hard bar and the upper link, and let me say this, you know, cause you'll look at this and you'll be like, well, you should have swapped your pan hard and your upper tried it. Didn't work. Neither was the appropriate. If I had swapped the links of what you see here, the front was way over and the pan hard was way under. So the links just weren't correct. Um, unfortunately, this is what I ended up with. This was the semi-functional version of what I was able to make work with the system here. The upper link was way too short. It caused obviously not an ideal pinion angle. Uh, granted that was a ride height, so it's not super great, but it just wasn't, the fitment was not what I had hoped or expected for having paid you know, really so much money for it. Now, the rear end, everything was perfect, beautiful, floated. I felt like I had the car tuned really well for the rear end. It was absolutely awesome. Those are in the back, our stock SEX shocks, running uh, red springs, really, really good stuff. But you can see up front here, I mean, even from this angle, that, pin, that you know, yoke angle, pinion angle is just terrible. Uh, and if you can also see that the pan hard is actually even still too short. So both of the pan hard and the upper link were too short. So uh, the actual axle is too far towards the table in this picture. So everything was swung to the left. There's a lot of space over here between the shock and the chassis over here. There was not that much space. It even ended up with, uh, you know, them running kind of sideways. So could I have fixed it? Could I have done custom work to make it work? Yeah, of course it's links. You know, links aren't the most complicated thing in the entire world but I had paid a thousand dollars for this thing to work. So it was kind of frustrating. Now, another thing to note too, is that the C2 chassis, and I'm assuming the C3 chassis, don't know for sure, but it's just a presumption or assumption rather. Now, here's another thing to note about the C2 chassis. I'm not sure if it's the exact same way with the C3, but I would assume so, is that it's a universal chassis skid plate design where if you see these little spacers that are around the skid plate, uh, they're designed for the widest skid plate in that, you know, option list of skid plates that you can use. Otherwise, they're just going to send you a little set of spacers to make it work. Is it the worst thing in the entire world? No, definitely not. But it makes it feel less custom and kind of like a crappy universal fit. Because as I was having problems with the front links not matching, you know, looking at the skid and maybe the mounting locations were in the wrong spot. Like it kind of just gave me the feeling of like, man, maybe, maybe something is just not how it's supposed to be. And I had even looked at, you know, potentially moving the skid forward to combat the short links, everything you can think of, I kind of tried to mess with it. Uh, so that being said, that was a big issue for me. One thing I did notice that I did not speak of in the video, coming back and adding this in, is that the entire frame of this chassis looks like it's designed for capper axles. If you're not familiar, capper axles are just slightly wider as well. The entire thing just didn't seem perfect for the straight axles. I felt like maybe that was what some of my link issues were, you know, whatever it could have been. But every picture I've seen where people have this thing flawlessly set up, they're easy, either using 60s or they're using capper axles. So trying to run 44s may have been my issue, but my assumption would have been that that would have been no problem. That shouldn't have been the reason that this had problems. I did, however, go ahead and finish up the car, uh, enjoy it. I do want to, I do want to show this really quick because the car itself, the rear end in particular, mm -hmm. chef's kiss. It was absolutely amazing. You see there's spots for bump stops there. There's trailing arms are absolutely beautiful. The back of the car was flawless to say the least. And you'll see that in the videos here in just a second. Uh, two things to note about the front as well as the geometry linking kind of being kind of scuffed is they supply you magnets to keep the top of the hood to the chassis. 
uh, I think on day one, my magnets either ripped off or they broke in half. So, you know, the, the, the stock hood, the stock magnets in there, they just don't hold worth the crap. Um, you know, my hood was falling off anytime I'd, I'd fall over or roll over or whatever. So I bought some really strong earth magnets, glued them in place here, and uh, everything worked out really, really well. But here's another shot where you can see that the pan hard is having an issue because there's a really big spacer uh, on the left side of this chassis and on the right side there's a much smaller spacer and you can even see that the shock angle itself is, is not exactly correct. And Again, I played with it. If I didn't run that spacer in there, it would rub against the chassis. If I ran a smaller spacer, it was still rubbing. Um, it just it just wasn't right. That's, that's the point I'm trying to make. But all said and done, the truck looked incredible. Uh, the little stock axial nittos, I chewed those up. Those were a lot of fun. The truck looked nice. It was, you know, kind of fun to drive. And I'll talk a little bit more about maybe why it wasn't as fun. But uh, I always had a question about these little panels right here, the little side pieces. Um, were you supposed to fold them in, fold them around the hood? I don't think it matters, but it is worth noting. The other thing that I wanted to mention about the front was if you see on the hood here, the hood it should be level here maybe my magnets were in the way in terms of like making those little seams meet but there's two grill meshes here uh, there's a back one that matches the jeep mesh exactly and then there's a front mesh as well which is bolted on by four screws you can see there now if you're going to run the front mesh which you have to otherwise let me go ahead and pull the camera back on me the hood will be right here in the the or excuse me, the, the fascia, the grill right there will be right here. And the hood will actually overhang slightly right here because it's missing uh, that little extra space that the extra uh, grill supplies. Now, what's the problem with that is, well, when you go to mount a winch, if you're a scale guy, like I was trying to do and be, you can't fit it on there because the pre-mounted winch holes are too close to that extra grill that I couldn't get any of my winches on there. Um, again, not a huge deal. But when you pay so much money, uh, it, you know, small things like this slowly become a de bigger deal. And you can see I'm running a crappy stock servo too. Like I said, after I'd spent so much money, I wasn't, you know, I just wanted to see if I liked it before I dumped too much more money at it. But uh, we'll look at some videos real quick. And uh, I will say this, it's a bit loud because I run a metal three gear transmission and it was open. So it's a bit loud, but uh, the, the volume is unrelated to the chassis, I'll say it like that see those spacers in there I will say though all in all the, the form finish of this thing is really something special it really is nice and uh, I don't have any of these particularly edited in a way that's you know elegant I had kind of used this all as footage to be loaded into a you know running video and to be honest with you I was so disappointed in the performance of this car when I took it out that I didn't spend any of the time doing that I spent most of my time uh, trying to get rid of the car, if I can be honest with you. I was pretty disappointed uh, in the performance, but like I said, we'll get there in just a minute. All in all, looks nice. It's a very good looking car. So let's get to uh, just some generic climbs, and again, we'll kind of sift through this here. Uh, filming with one hand and driving with the other is not my forte. Okay, that's the only time I'm going to show one where it's like a complete failure, but that was funny because that was the first attempt at me trying to record all of this as well, and it just instantly flopped over. I knew it was going to be a long day. Like I said, those little nittos, they actually surprised me quite a bit on what they were actually able to uh, hook to. I thought it was pretty interesting. Now, I will say here, you'll notice my passenger side dry, or front tire. Uh, I had lost a, uh, a ball joint for the knuckle, so it was just quite the day when I had taken this out for the first time.
sway bar works really well. I was super pleased with that. I mean, all in all for what it did, you know, I'm not climbing the hardest trails I could find by any means, but I did find it was very, very top heavy. I had my car a little bit more set up for speed, and you'll see that in some of these videos, but for what it's worth, I mean, it did okay. The problem, like my real beef with the car is that it weighed so much. Uh, it just, it just was really, really tough to, to rock crawl with it the way I'd hoped to kind of have like a scale machine crawl. I remember this being one of the times where I was really disappointed in the performance of this car. And it could be just a wheelbase issue, but with the car's weight and not feeling comfortable enough in the front, I mean, the front really felt unstable when you drove it. It was not necessarily super predictable in regards to steering and things like that. It was heavy light in the front end it's okay you know looking back at it now it's not as bad as maybe i remember or like maybe my thoughts make me think about it but i still would not go back and buy another one of these for sure so all in all the car is a really nice piece of art. Uh, Performance-wise, it probably does as good as, you know, maybe high-powered stock version of one of these cars, or not a stock version, but like a high-powered RTR. Um, the, the selling point for these things is, man, do they look good. That's, that's really it. Um, could you spend more time and money and make it be polished and do all that? Yeah, for sure, but that's not what I wanted for spending $1,000 for a right-out-of-the-box car. Um, who knows? Uh, I will say this, I did get a chance to have a B1 in my ownership there for a little while. One thing I'll tell you about the B1s, again, same fitment, quality, all that stuff that you can see from RC Speedy across the board, but definitely have to use their skids. You know, with the leading arm, trailing arm setup, can't retrofit a Wraith, can't retrofit a Bomber, you have to use their stuff, and it has to be absolutely just, the, I mean, it has to be their stuff. Just go, trust me. Uh, I've sold this to a buddy of mine. These are his pictures, and um, I'll tell you, man, it's it's really a nice car if you have the time to put in, you know, all the custom handling and things that it needs to make it work. So, with that, thanks everybody for watching. I appreciate it. If you're not following already, if you watched this long, thanks. Uh, subscribe, give the channel a like if you appreciate it. You know, thanks. Appreciate you.